Good morning. I'm Reverend Mark Brees, and welcome to worship at uh, Community Missions uh, Weekly Chapel Service. Um, I am out in front of the Niagara River, uh, sitting on the Canadian side, actually, uh, early this morning, just after sunrise, uh, and uh, just very pleased to be here uh, in worship with you on uh, this uh, beautiful spring morning. Well, almost summer morning, really. Um, I want to begin with our usual admonishments, um, although I know things are shifting. Um, uh, I, I personally am still encouraging people to uh, wear masks when they are in group settings, uh, especially that are in closed spaces, um, simply because we don't know, um, uh, or we know that not everybody is able to be vaccinated uh, for one reason or another. Uh, so uh, I just encourage you to be loving towards your neighbors and if you're in that kind of a setting uh, to make sure that you're wearing a mask or choose to wear a mask so that you can display your love for people in that way. Because um, we're not totally out of the woods yet, we're getting there, um, in the U.S. anyway, um, but we still need to be mindful. Uh, and I will also say if you have not yet been vaccinated, please do consider doing that. Uh, if you have questions or concerns, I encourage you to look at the CDC website uh, to get information about these vaccines or uh, even better to talk with your um, uh, personal doctor um, or pharmacist to, to learn more about the vaccine and have any questions you have might have uh, answered. So all that said, let's begin our worship this morning. Um, and. Uh, with our psalm. Um, and I guess I'll say, since a car is coming along, the, where I'm sitting at in front of the river is right along Niagara, uh, the Niagara Parkway uh, in Ontario that runs right along the river from Fort Erie to uh, Niagara Falls. Uh, uh, and uh, so there'll be some cars that go by now and then. All right, our psalm this morning uh, comes uh, from Psalm 138. I give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of Saul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord for great is the glory of the Lord, for the Lord is high. He regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk through the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. This is the word of the Lord. Let's join together in our first hymn of the morning. Come, you faithful, raise the strain of triumphant gladness. God has brought his Israel into joy from sadness. spring of souls today Christ has burst his prison and from three days sleep in death as a sun has risen all the winter of our sins long and dark is flying from his light to of seasons bright with a day of splendor with the royal feast of feast comes its joy to render comes to glad and faithful hearts which with true affection welcome in unwearied strain Jesus resurrection 
it's different behind me. <laughs> I guess it turns out that uh, there is a lot of people who drive to work along this road in the morning. Uh, so um, the, I am now on the uh, other side of the road in Chippewa Battlefield, uh, sitting at a table there, uh, finishing up. So just a little bit too noisy. So um, we come to a time of prayer in our service this morning. And uh, um, I'd like to uh, have us um, be thinking about a, a few things in particular. Um, we just did have uh, Memorial Day uh, celebrations. And uh, so I just would like us to continue uh, to remember those who have um, uh, uh, served um, and uh, given their lives in service to uh, the freedom that allows us to worship um, and have beautiful places like this without uh, the threat uh, uh, that could come from worshiping uh, and uh, with whatever our faith tradition might be. Uh, so uh, I think it's important that people of faith uh, in the United States and even here in Canada uh, remember that um, the, the uh, cost of being able to um, uh, worship freely as we choose uh, has been high. Um, and uh, that others have given us that, that gift because that's not the case in all places in the world, even now. Uh, so something to be thankful for and to um, uh, remember and, and honor those who, who helped secure this for us. Um, I also want us to be thinking uh, about uh, those uh, places in the world that are still struggling greatly with uh, COVID-19 because although it is ending for us, it seems, uh, and things are getting better, there are places where it still is not. Um, so we need to be praying for uh, the wellness and for the health and uh, safety of uh, many people around the world. Um, and we also need to be praying for the governments, our government leaders in the, uh, the wealthy countries in the world to be realizing that um, until uh, vaccines are available to anybody and uh, everywhere, uh, that um, we're not going to see the end of uh, these struggles that we have been in. I also want us to be uh, remembering to be praying for racial justice uh, in the United States and around the world. Um, it is, uh, we've had a, a week here, a few days of remembrance from uh, dark parts of the past uh, in uh, the United States. And we know that there continue uh, to be uh, uh, so uh, uh, continues to be so, so much unjust uh, discrimination uh, based on race and religion and all kinds of things uh, just because people look or believe different. Um, so we really need to be um, uh, praying as one people that God will strengthen us uh, as a people and as individuals to stand up for justice in the world, uh, for racial equity, um, and for um, simply um, uh, for the ability to love one another and have that be uh, a love that is unconditional uh, no matter who the person is. So let's pray for um, that justice to be something that we can help bring about in the world. And I know that each one of us has our own concerns, um, our own celebrations, uh, our own joys, uh, our own needs. So as we pray together now, let's lift all of these things up to God. Uh, let's do it in a way that will um, give praise to God uh, for uh, God's many blessings, that will uh, honor God and thank God for being able to take uh, our concerns and our needs uh, close to God's heart. So bring your prayers to the altar, bring them to the foot of the cross, and let's pray together.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. So, the reason I wanted to come out in uh, the morning and uh, uh, be uh, with you at the very start of the day as the light uh, is growing around us here uh, in the, uh, this uh, wonderful uh, late spring, uh, getting close to summer morning, um, is because this is one of those passages that um, I love because it's so short and says so much. Um, uh, there is this uh, uh, repeated refrain throughout the parables of Jesus uh, where we hear him say uh, those words, let anyone with ears to hear listen. And um, another way of saying that is one I like, a translation that comes out of a, a trans Bible translation called The Message. Um, and it says, uh, are you listening to this? Really listening? Uh, scripture is something that needs to be revealed to us, uh, something that needs to be worked at in understanding, um, something that needs to be um, really um, examined and lived with and prayed over um, and uh, allowed to sit in our hearts and our minds. Um, for us to get the uh, meaning, to really hear uh, what God has to say to us. Jesus, in this short little passage that we're looking at this morning, um, uh, has this line where he says at the start that uh, is a lamp to be put, uh, to, uh, is a, a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand. I don't know about you, but um, when I turn on uh, the lamp next to my bed um, to read, just a lot of times I read before I go to sleep, um, you know, that lamp has got to be up high enough so it can light the pages of the book. You wouldn't set it down next to the bed uh, where you couldn't uh, get the light to shine on the page. Um, you know, you have maybe that favorite chair that you might want to sit in when you read in your living room. and. Uh, that's by the open window where you can get that good light to uh, be able to see the page clearly. Um, you wouldn't draw uh, the blinds so that you have a shadow on your book. You would be uh, opening the window uh, blinds wide so that light will come in. Scripture is something that we need to encounter in the bright of day and put in that work and that effort. Um, Jesus did often talk in these parables, which to us today uh, sometimes seem hard to understand um, or some way, in some way obscured, um, but they wouldn't have been as obscure to uh, the people he was originally speaking with. Um, you know, that idea that is in this, put really clearly in this passage this morning, in verse 22, that there is 
uh, nothing hidden except to be disclosed, right? It, the way in which Jesus spoke was to get people to think, to have them encounter the scriptures, encounter not the scripture, well, yes, the Jewish scriptures, um, but to encounter his words in particular uh, as um, uh, something that needed to be really taken inside and uh, worked at in our life. Are you listening to this? Really listening, Jesus says over and over. I want you to have to think about your faith. I want you to have to think about what God is offering to you in terms of the grace and love that is there for you every day. We sometimes forget that our faith takes a little bit of work. We sometimes forget that we can sort of even lead ourselves astray by thinking oh, it's too hard for me to understand. I'm a great believer in alternate translations of the Bible. If something doesn't uh, strike you, uh, it doesn't serve, become clear to you, I always suggest pulling out another a translation. One of the ones that I like for this sometimes, although I do have some difficulties with it because it's not a, um, it's not like a uh, Greek to English translation as much as it is kind of a paraphrasing, um, is the message. Um, it's a, a translation written by one person, not by a committee, which is usually how translations go. Um, uh, and um, the way he has this passage that we read this morning um, kind of makes things um, a little bit clearer to, uh, clearer to us. In fact, one of the best ways in which you can uh, see how these translations, different translations can help you is in verse 25, because it's one of those ones where it sort of is a little bit head spinning. <clears throat> because it says in verse, it reads in verse 24, and he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given to you. That's a pretty standard translation of verse 24, and we can kind of get that, right? In verse 24, it's saying, look, what you put in is what you're going to get out when it comes to your faith. The effort you put in in becoming closer to God and part of the uh, Word of God in your life, bringing it in and having it guide you, you have to put in that effort to do it. So that's kind of clear, even to our ears today. But then comes verse 25. Right? And that's the one I want us to focus on here. For those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. That doesn't sound very Jesus-y. It sounds like, wait a minute, the person who's got more is going to keep getting more, and I, who have nothing, am going to keep getting less? <clears throat> that doesn't sound like all the other stuff we hear Jesus saying. And this is where another translation can help you. Here's verses 24 and 25 from the message. Listen carefully to what I'm saying and be wary of the shrewd advice that tells you how to get ahead in the world on your own. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. Stinginess impoverishes. For those who have more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. It's something we actually have to flip on its head to really understand what Jesus is getting at. We have to remember that what we put in is what we get out of things, <clears throat> especially in terms of our faith. But when it comes to uh, the faith that we have and our way we live in the world, we have to be careful about uh, how we go about making sure we're okay and who we listen to and what messages we take in. We have to really listen to make sure that what we're taking in and allowing to influence is something that's godly, is something that's pleasing to God. We are, this passage is saying, to listen carefully to what Christ is saying, what God is saying. It's not the shrewd advice that we need from others. It's that tell us how we can get ahead in the world, right? It is giving 
not getting. That's what matters. The generosity that we put out there to others makes there be more generosity towards us and in the rest of the world. What we put out in the world makes a difference. Generosity begets generosity. Those who have more will be given more, right? Those who have that gift of love in their hearts, those who uh, put it out into the world in ways that are loving, um, uh, that are caring, that are compassionate, those who share the gift that God has given to them of uh, love of Christ, of the salvation and the forgiveness of sins, the redemption that allows us to have newness of life, those who have that in abundance, who learn to take it deep into their hearts, who really listen to the message, will grow in their faith and will be able to share that with others more and more. Giving generously of what we have spiritually gives us greater spiritual growth. Even giving generously of what we have materially will help us grow spiritually. I'm not saying, and I always have to say this, don't impoverish yourself. Don't, you know, give away your rent money. But at the same time, you need to be mindful that there are those who might not have that rent money or that grocery money and that there may be ways you can help and give in love, the kind of love that you know because you have increased it in your heart through listening closely to the scriptures, listening closely to the Spirit of God as it improves your faith and lifts you closer to God. We have to listen carefully. It is like the light that comes up in the morning. It's like the rising sun. Uh, things start dim uh, and they grow brighter as the sun rises. Behind me here, I think when, we first, when I first came over here, uh, there was a lot of mist around me that you would have seen. But as the sun has risen, it has heated that mist and it's turned, to, it's turned into uh, vapor that we can't see and uh, things have cleared up. Uh, as we grow in our faith, as the light of God shines on us, as that lamp light of God, that light of the Spirit grows in our lives, as we let it shine and not hide it away, as that grows, the world around us becomes clearer and we better understand our purpose in it, which is to love one another. Sisters and brothers, it's a short and easy message today. The light of God is all around us. It's within us, and we need to let it shine in ourselves and from out of ourselves. It's not something to be hidden. It's something to be shared with others. There's nothing secret about it. It's something we need to really listen to, and we should let our ears be opened. Are you listening? Really listening? Listen carefully, Christ says. Don't be shrewd about it or give in to those messages that tell you uh, to be stingy and uh, greedy and unloving and uncompassionate. Instead, don't listen to that advice in the world. Instead, listen to the advice of God. Giving, not getting, is what is pleasing to God and increases the light within us. Sharing God's message is so important. Our generosity towards others will bring greater generosity into the world. Stinginess in our spirit, being a miser, a scrooge, with our spiritual gifts and with our physical gifts and with uh, the gift of life and salvation that we've been giving, being stingy with that only increases the stinginess of the world, only closes us off and see the love uh, that comes from God. Sisters and brothers, let your light shine. Let the lamp of your faith be something that everybody sees clearly. Let your compassion be shown to the world so that it can be made a brighter place and those who need the light most can see it and they can see that light from God in you. Amen. Let's join in our final hymn of the morning.